I am Ruth Inessa Jay. You're watching New Vision TV News. We come to you from the New Vision Newsroom. We'll start with the news around Uganda, then around East Africa, around the world, and later in this bulletin, we'll have a look at our Daily Pearl of Africa series and end with a special report which you should look out for. Now, let us start with the news around Uganda, where we look at stories making headlines across the country. We start off the bulletin from Oyam district. After elephants raided a village in Oyam yesterday, people are scared that animals will return. People living near national parks and game reserves have borne the blunt of animals, which stray into their gardens and homes and destroy them. Elephants are notorious at causing mayhem and destruction when they stray out of the parks. In Oyam, it is estimated that over 50 have been killed by stray elephants in the last decade, while many have been left with injuries and broken limbs. In April, a pregnant mother was trampled to death by stray elephants in Kamdini sub-county. Doga Sawino, a 29-year-old mother of two, who was seven months pregnant, had gone to buy painkillers in Nora Trading Center when she met her death. One of the victims, Tony Ogwang, in yesterday's attack, is a primary school teacher in Adingo Primary School in Lower Sub-County, Oyam District. A parade of elephants marched in Titi Village, Juma Parish, Kamdin Sub-County, leaving him nursing injuries. The elephants came from Karuma Wildlife Reserve in Matson Falls National Park. As they enjoyed the crops, Ogwang tried to drive them away. They became wild and charged at him, breaking his rib bones and injuring him. He was rushed to Pope John Hospital for treatment. Let's move on to Kabalori District. Now, police in Fort Porto have custody of British national William Sam Lito, who is accused of promoting the use of Miracle Mineral Solution as a cure for cancer, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. William has reportedly been moving around different parts of Kavalori and nearby districts convincing people to get the mineral solution so as to get healed of cancer and other many illnesses. Lydia Tumshawe, the Missouri West Regional Police spokesperson, in a statement released on Thursday confirmed the arrest of William and other two Ugandans who are being detained at Fort Porto Central Police Station pending investigations. Police arrested William on Wednesday from Kitembe village in Karambi sub-county Kavalori district with two other Ugandans who were identified as Tadeo Samula and Albert Samuel aged 27 or residents of Maguru in Fort Porto. Some news from Kampala. According to the National Forest Authority, Uganda's forest cover has reduced from 24% in 1990 to only 4% today and declines at an alarming rate. It is for this reason that Vision Group is launching a drive codenamed Plant One Tree for Your Grandchild. The drive will help restore the environment and guard against the adverse effects of degradation and climate change. Vision Group's Robert Kabshenga said at the launch that the drive will help restore the environment and guard against the adverse effects of degradation and climate change. We've decided to do a campaign uh, which we're calling Grow a tree for your grandchild and our target is to grow a million trees. Kabsheng explained that the public can contribute in three ways. Sign up to plant a tree, pay money for somebody to do so or do both. Kabshenga said the rampant loss of tree cover has motivated action to reverse the trend of destruction of the environment. He also pointed out that Vision Group is concerned about the indigenous trees that are being wiped out. We're going to publish a list of the indigenous trees and you choose what you want. Tell us the quantities because that will give us an idea of the demand. Anything from Kawakanjagala to Mugavu to Nongo, whatever. Just tell us what you're interested in, uh, and we will deal with it. So when you register and you want to plant a tree or grow a tree for your grandchild, just let us know which type. We're going to run this campaign. We will, we will, we will 
Once you're interested, let us know. We'll register your name and your details if you want to plant. If you want to contribute, we're going to tell you the bank account and the mobile money account where you should send this to. Uh, remember one thing. Uh, if we don't act now, if our generation doesn't act now, we are finished. He said some parts of northern Uganda and Kalangala are the most affected by deforestation, adding that indigenous trees are being cut down for charcoal. Kavshenga said the campaign will promote fruit trees such as jackfruit and sawso, locally known as chitaferi in central Uganda, would be promoted. Uh, we'll also try and propagate some fruit trees like sawso or chitaferi, fene. They are also good trees to plant. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me, because of the charcoal trade, northern Uganda and Sese Islands are almost bare. The campaign is expected to last eight months and the first four to five months will be for the propagation of the seedlings and the last three for planting. So let's plant one tree for our grandchildren. Let's move on to Mbale district. Now police were this morning forced to fire live bullets and tear gas to disperse groups of angry rioters that stormed the streets of Mbale town to express their disappointment over cabinet refusal to grant Mbale municipality a city status. The group of rioters, comprising mainly the youth, stormed the street starting from Palisa Road and entered Mbale main garage through Bishop Wasike Road and joined Clock Tower. The youth led by NRM youth chairperson Sarim Namaje and others armed with placards were blowing whistles, vuvuzelas, rounding the Clock Tower as residents joined them. They also attempted to walk to office of the RDC located on regional block, but they were blocked by anti-riot police that had staged at the clock tower. The Mbale DPC, Freda Himbisibu, arrived at the scene and tried to calm them down, but they resisted and continued pelting stones at police that left one injured. Moving on to Amulata district, Moses Court had run announcements on local radio stations calling upon residents to come and meet him. However, the meeting was blocked when UPDF soldiers and the Amulata resident, District Commissioner Lilian Alwal, intervened. A soldier guarding the RDC reportedly shot him. A coach who is a lawyer by profession with a lawyer and company advocates posted on social media that he was placed under house arrest for posing the harassment of fishermen on Lake Chuga by the military. A coach had reportedly organized to meet victims whose property had been destroyed by the army and help them petition the government. This prompted the police to arrest private Moses Tumukunde, a a resident of Amlata Town Council attached to Lira UPDF Barks. The police said they are detaining him at Amlata Central Police Station. Okot Jr. is an aspirant for MP Choga constituency and a promoter of People Power Movement, which is led by Chad and East Member of Parliament Robert Chagulanyi. And from Rukunjiri District, State Minister for Health and General Duties, Sara Upende, has decried the increasing number of fistula cases in Uganda, which she said was largely due to early marriages. Upende says men are responsible for most fistula cases, and yet when it happens, they abandon women due to a bad smell which they created. Opendi urged the district chairperson, Anderson Katevire, to pass a bylaw on early marriages so that when a girl gets married before the age of 18, the parents of the boy, the girl, the couple, and the chairman, LC1, where they reside, should be arrested. Minister Opendi said this on Thursday while commemorating International Fistula Day at Nyarushanje Modu Primary School in Ibanda Parish, Nyarushanje Subcounty, in Rukundiri district. Finally, from Luwero district, the state minister for local government, Jennifer Namuyango, has cautioned Luwero district of political leaders to reduce politicking and instead devote more time on serving the people. This is after two of the top district leaders clashed before the minister. The hot verb exchange was between LC5 chairperson Ronald Indaula and Katika North MP Abraham Biandala, 
on Thursday. The drama that unfolded during the Kimeza public debate meeting that was held at Butuntumla sub-county headquarters started when Biandala accused Ndaula of diverting 600 bags of cement, which the DFCU bank donated towards construction of a new district administration block. Biandala also accused the chairman of lacking transparency and constructing the 4 billion shilling new district headquarters building without a fiscal plan. That is it for the news around Uganda. Let's move on to the news around East Africa from Tanzania. Opposition parties in Tanzania are demanding electoral reforms ahead of the local elections in October and presidential polls next year. Parties including CCK, NLD, NCCR, Mugwezi, Chadema and SCT Wazalendo, among others, have formed a coalition calling for the creation of an independent electoral commission. News from South Sudan. South Sudan President Salva Kiir is in Johannesburg for a state visit and to follow up on a recent agreement signed between the two countries regarding oil exploration in South Sudan, according to a statement issued by the South Sudan presidency. It is unclear whether discussions between the two sides will also include talks on South Sudan's ongoing peace process, which has suffered setbacks over the last several years. News from Rwanda, terror suspect Kalik Sinsabimana appeared before Gasabo Primary Court on Thursday where he was charged with 16 terror-related crimes. The charges include attacks on Rwandans that left up to nine people dead and many others injured. He was also charged with forming a rebel group that carried out the terror attacks mainly in southern Rwanda. The suspect pleaded guilty to all the charges. That is it for the news around East Africa. Moving on to the news around the world, we start from Britain. British Prime Minister Theresa May announced her resignation in an emotional address on Friday, ending a dramatic three-year tenure of near-constant crisis over Brexit. May, her voice breaking, said outside her Downing Street office, it is and will always remain a matter of deep regret to me that I have not been able to deliver Brexit. 62-year-old May said she would step down as Conservative Party leader on June the 7th. She would remain as Prime Minister in a caretaker role until a replacement is elected by the party. The leader of the party automatically becomes Prime Minister. So I am today announcing that I will resign as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party on Friday the 7th of June, so that a successor can be chosen. It is, and will always remain, a matter of deep regret to me that I have not been able to deliver Brexit. Moving on, news from Somalia. The Somali government says it is not ready to take an action that could threaten its relationship with its neighbor, Kenya. The announcement comes amid simmering tensions over potential offshore oil deposits and an incident where Somali government officials and diplomats were denied entry to Kenya this week. In a linked protest letter, the Somali government raised concerns about what it called a Kenyan decision to deny entry visas to some lawmakers and diplomats who had planned to attend a European Union meeting in Nairobi on Tuesday. News from India, a firebrand Hindu nationalist nun facing terrorism charges over the deadly bombing of a mosque has been elected to Indian parliament. A week after Prime Minister Narendra Modi condemned her for celebrating the assassin of independence hero. Closing off the news around the world is a story from China where China's president has called for technological self-reliance in the escalating rivalry with America. But experts believe Beijing's lead start on tech and relatively backward capabilities could make that a mission 
impossible. China has no doubt made an amazing transformation from a former basket case racked by mass famine and political upheaval to a highly connected society marked by growing use of renewable energy, a space program and bullet trains crisscrossing the country. That is it for the news around the world.